For this episode, I have something super cool I want to try. So in React, there are a lot of different ways to manage your UI state. And I guess the most basic and primal way is to use the useState function. And you can send that state and setState function down as a prop in your components. And that way, uh, in, a, in a component that's lower down, you're able to call the setState function and use the state. But I don't like that solution and I guess a lot of people don't either because it creates this high coupling and where, the, where you have components that in between that have to accept this set state as well as the state even though if they don't use it they're only gonna pass it along and that creates both this high coupling as well as increases the complexity of the component and I guess it reduces the overall reusability as well. So I think it was in React 16.3 where they introduced the concept of context as well as a provider. And what it, what it lets you do is it lets you define a context which can be a collection of states as well as function to operate upon this state. And what you do is you create a provider and you wrap your component inside this provider and everything that's inside this provider is able to access this context. So to clarify things, I thought I'd show you an example of a context and how to set it up and how to use it. So if you use TypeScript, the first thing you do, uh, per usual, is you declare an interface, which we have done here. And here I pretty much have set up, that is I want a days variable, which is gonna hold an active days array. We're gonna have a set days function, which is gonna take a day and return an array. And the same thing for reset, but it's not going to take anything and it's going to return an array. And this is going to pretty much nullify it and make it empty. But anyway, so for the context and not TypeScript parts that is related is, you call the create context function, which is exported from React. And then you pass in this interface to tell it, okay, so these are the, these are the properties that's going to be available inside our context later down in the road. And you can set it to null by default. And then after that, you create the provider. And here you define the state and how these functions are actually implemented. So this is what we do here. So we have a days, which we get from a use state. And then I have an update days function, which is pretty much a toggle for arrays. If it, if it doesn't exist in the array, append it. If it exists, remove it. And we have a reset function, which pretty much just resets the entire array. So now we have defined the function implementations for them, that's perfect. So then we go to the next step, which is we return the selected day context, uh, which we have defined here, and then we call dot provider, because this is what we want to provide. And then you have to provide some values, because it knows that it wants the days, it wants the set days, and it wants the reset. So how are they implemented? Well, perfect, because we have defined it here. So we just pass it along that the days are here, the set days is the update days, and the reset is the reset. And then we wrap it. So you have to accept a children in your provider. And you do that because this is what's going to allow you to wrap this provider around your component. And then everything that's going to be inside this component, which is wrapped, is going to be able to access this context. And this is, this is, this is the gist, this is the defining thing of context that you wrap around a component and then everything inside is going to be act be able to access this this state pretty much and um, finally you create and um, you don't have to but this is optional but this is kind of the custom way not custom but um, uh, this is kind of how you most often go about it uh, you define a custom hook which is just going to return the use context function which is also exported by react and you're just gonna pass down your um, context. And this gives you a bit more of a semantic way to access the context without having to use the use context. So you can you can say, uh, use select the day as a hook, uh, and it's a bit more clean. Um, so anyway, so what we have done is we have created a context and we have cre created a provider. So now the next step is you wrap your components inside this provider. So for instance, I have the routine component, which is very far up in the tree. So what I do is I just take whatever I want and I take the selected days provider, which we defined here. 
and then I wrap it around my routine component and that's pretty much it so now every component that's inside routine component is able to access this context this reset the days and the set days from within by using this you selected day hook so now in our day selector which is a component very far down in the routine uh, we can now call the days and set days function which are exposed here and we can for instance use them so if we can say okay on the click uh, we want to set days to the days which we have clicked on and we can get it and yeah so that's pretty much the kind of use case and uh, representation of why you would want to use the context and how you would go about implementing it and I think it's a neat solution but I also think that it kind of creates this uh, problem where if you have many different if you have a very deep nesting and sometimes you only want a component to talk to another component two or three levels down you have to create a context and that, that lets you end up with many different contexts all the time. So you have to spin up a new context, a new provider and a hook. Because most of the time it's easier to just talk and use the context through a use context hook. And so that's the thing that I'm kind of struggling with at the moment. That I have to spin up all these different contexts. So I'm going to try a new way. A, a new kind of library to solve this issue where you, where you otherwise would create many contexts. So I want to try a library that's called Sustand. So if my understanding of Sustand is correct, then what it lets you do is it lets you create a store where you have your state and the functions, and then you can just uh, use a hook for using the store everywhere in your application. So you get all the advantages of using the context, but you don't actually have to spin up a context every time. You only have to create a store, and then you can consume the store from everywhere in your application. And if you ever were with Svelte, uh, I know that they also have this kind of way to manage your state where you create small stores instead, and then you use them. And I really like that solution. So that's why I want to try it out. So I've added Sustan to the project now, and I thought I'd show you some pretty cool use cases for it. So if we go into the application here, and we press on information button, we can see that now we get some information about routines. And if we press it again, it's gone. So we pretty much have a toggle button, right? And how that happens is that, okay, so what you do is, if you're using TypeScript, you can create an interface, which I've done. And this is pretty much a tell, uh, Sustan what type of operations or properties are, go are gonna be available inside the store So I've declared a boolean which is gonna be false by default So we're not gonna show the information and we're gonna have a toggle info function And what it's gonna do is it just going to set the enabled to the other state So if it's true, it's going to switch to false and the same thing for false is gonna be true And that's everything that's actually in here and we name this hook use routine info and we export it and now inside our routine top bar we can get this function by calling the use routine info and then selecting that we want the toggle info function and then we can just take this function and set it inside our uh, button for uh, actually calling it so here in our own click we can say that okay we want to call the toggle info whenever we click on the information button and inside our routines, what we can do is we can get the actual property of the enabled by calling the state and using the hook and then calling the state and, and getting the enabled property. And this is also kind of why we use TypeScript because now we're able to infer that, okay, we have two properties. We have the toggle info, which is a function, and we have the enable, which is a boolean. And then we can just see if it's true, then we want to render the routine heading, and if it's false, we don't. And if, if you look closely, you can probably see though that we would have been able to get this kind of functionality 
by using the use state and just passing down the set state function to the routine top bar and prop drilling it here, right? But in this way, we don't have to do any form of prop drilling and we're able to access this uh, information from anywhere in our tree, right? And it might not be as impressive when we only have one uh, when we only have uh, when we only have one level uh, nesting otherwise. But imagine if we have a lot of different nesting, right? And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So imagine a scenario where you want to force the user's focus on some part of the application. So for instance, here if the user presses delete your routine, what we can do is we can show this model as a big overlay over the entire application. And we can also disable scroll so that they're not able to scroll but they have to decide whether or not they should perform this destructive action. And it's something which would be very hard to do with prop drilling but it's very easy to do with the help of Sustant. So what we do here is I create an interface for the delete model and instead of having an enable I'm just gonna base it on this routine whether it's defined or not. So we're gonna set it to null by default and we're also gonna create this set routine to delete function and what it's going to do is it's going to um, add a class that's going to disable the scrolling if, uh, if the routine is not null and it's going to remove it if it's null so then you can scroll freely. And then after that you're also going to set the routine to the argument that is being passed. Okay, this is the kind of functionality which would be fairly hard to recreate by using prop drilling. Uh, you would be able to do it with a context and a provider, but it would also force you to actually create a context and a provider and wrap pretty much your entire application in it. So if you check our routines here, we can see that we have our routines component, which in itself contains a routine container. The routine container contains a routine. The routine contains an edit button and this edit button is what, what decides if this model should be rendered or not. So what we do here is that we can just get this hook and call the set routine to delete by using this hook and then we can pass it this routine that is being called from. So we're calling it from bedtime routine and then by using that we can pass this routine to the, to the set routine to delete function. And in our layout component, which is very big, it's pretty much wrapping the entire, the entire application. We can just check now that if the delete active, which, have gotten, which we have gotten by using this hook, if it's true and if it's defined, it's not true, but if it's defined, then we want to show this model as an overlay. And you can see that this would be at least like five levels of prop drilling if we weren't using Sustan and just using prop drilling. And we can also see that now in our delete model, we're also able to use this hook and here we can use the routine. So for instance, maybe we want to show the title for the routine, such as the case where we want to say, okay, do you want to delete bedtime routine? And maybe the user doesn't want to, then we can just say, okay, in that scenario, set the routine to null. And when you press the cancel, it goes away. So we have created this pretty fairly, I don't know if it's fairly, but it's pretty, it would be very hard or complex to do with just prop drilling. But we have managed to do this form of kind of global UI state management by using the hooks that's being exposed from Sustan and just creating a small little store for it. So yeah, that's one of the really cool advantages of using Sustand. So I know I didn't really show any progress of the application in this video, but I really wanted to make a video on Sustand because I've heard a lot about it and I figured it would solve many of the problems which usually arises in my projects. And now after trying it out, I'm fairly sure that it actually will solve many of my problems. So yeah, I'm super happy about it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.